Okay, I hear people coming. <laughs> Howdy. Okay, um, I'm going to start the open the meeting at 6:18. Um, welcome to the Linux Australia SGM again. Um, um, thanks, Paul, for coming. Um, we've got a pretty quick agenda to get through, um, so hopefully we won't take up too much of people's time. Um, we have quorum just. We have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight people in the room, nine if you count people under four foot tall. Um, Who are members? Who are members? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, to kick things off, um, Alice is taking minutes. Um, if someone could pass a bit of paper around the room for everyone to write their names down on so we've got a, a list of who was in attendance, that would be great. Um, so I will kick off with the Treasurer's Report. Uh, let's see here, tab, this tab, that tab. Um, so um, the Treasurer's Report was uh, compiled by Josh Heskus, um, who couldn't make it uh, this evening. Um, I'll run through it very, very, very quickly because it's been up on the mailing list for people to review. Um, we weren't able to um, provide the report at the AGM in January. Um, Due to a couple of factors, um, we've moved to a new um, accounting system this year, Xero, um, which means that we've got all our accounting stuff in the cloud. Um, it also integrates with, um, directly with our bank, so all our bank entries um, come straight into the accounting system. Um, it's actually made things really, really easy this year um, in terms of running conferences and, and doing expenses and accounts. Um, it's meant that, um, especially in terms of paying expenses to volunteers, uh, we've been able to just give volunteers accounts in zero. They put their expenses and uh, receipts straight in and they get paid pretty quickly. I think we've got um, expense turnarounds uh, currently of about less than a week um, at most for most people. Um, initially I was treasurer at the start of 2010 and then Josh Hesketh took over in about uh, June-ish um, after James Turnbull uh, left the council to move to the US. Um, we've also had a new requirement for 2010 um, with regards to auditing um, of our financials. Um, new legislation came in New South Wales in 2009, Mary? Mm. Yep. And, and became effective in 2010, um, which requires all organisations with a um, revenue of greater than $250,000, which we easily, easily achieve um, because of LCA, um, to help produce audited accounts. Um, that meant we weren't able to do them for the... Um, AGM in um, Brisbane after LCA or during LCA um, due to the, the period of time, um, which is the main reason we're having tonight's meeting. Um, with the financial year finishing um, at the end of December and then our AGM usually around you know, the 25th, 26th of January, it only gives us three weeks at you know, the quietest time of the year um, to get audited accounts in order. Um, this year being the first time it took a fair while, it took us a couple of months, um, I would expect that in previous years, um, since we've gone through it once with this auditor and he knows what all our processes are, um, that we can do that much more quickly. Um, so we're aiming to move the financial year to October, which gives us a fair few months um, between the end of the financial year and the AGM when we need to present that auditor's report. Um, the, um, some people have asked why we didn't move it to June. Um, the main reason there is that there's a six-month period after your... your end of financial year that you have to submit the reports to um, fair trading um, and we'd be outside the six month period if we had the financial year in June. Um, did you have a question, uh, Julian? So would the conversion be an eight month, uh, sorry, 10 month financial year? Or yeah, so what we'll be doing is we'll be having a, I'll get to it in the, in the, in the next section, but we're basically uh, resolving to close off the 2011 financial year in October, so we'll have a nine-month financial year, and then we'll start a 12-month rolling financial year that will be from October to October. Um, that's the main um, sections in um, Josh's report. Um, the, just the main note on the financial reports, um, due to the way that the accounting stuff is done, um, because the financial year currently finishes in December, um, a lot of regos for LCA um, get kept, uh, get brought in already by that stage. It's about two hundred thousand dollars worth. Um, actually, I'll pull that up in the uh, balance sheet. So you'll see that um, 
Here in liabilities, we've got about $374,000 in prepaid conference fees. That's effectively the regos for LCA. Um, that gets moved into, um, into conference fees um, rather than income, um, since due to auditing requirements, we can't bank it as income um, because if the conference didn't happen, as almost happened this year, um, we'd have to pay it back. Um, so just running quickly through the balance sheet, um, we came in with uh, $679,000 in total assets. That's also a little bit inflated because of um, the accounts receivable and sort of the opposite of banking the regos. <laughs> if, we've got, uh, if we've got funds that we had to pay um, for conference venues and stuff, they come up in the assets column. Um, in terms of what was in the bank account at that stage, it was about $486,000. Um, similarly for liabilities, um, that th sort of $398,000 there is mainly due to the pre paid conference fees of $374,000. Um, so we basically sort of sit there at about a net assets of $281,000, um, which I believe is an improvement on the last couple of years. Um, okay, that's profit and loss and there's, no sorry, that was the balance sheet. And there's the profit and loss for the year. Um, as you can see, most of our income comes from LCA, although we're starting to have a couple of other conferences. Um, there were two in 2010 and we ran up to three, almost four in 2011 with um, Drupal Down Under and WordPress coming online. Uh, where's my agenda gone? There? No, there maybe. Um, so I'd like to move a motion that we, the membership accepts the 2010 Treasurer's Report. Um, seconded by Mary. <laughs> there you go, the lights again. Um, now if you're, hold, if you're holding proxies, I've checked that all the proxies, uh, is anyone holding proxies um, who I haven't asked if they're holding proxies? No? Okay, cool. So if you're holding proxies, if you can hold up the appropriate number of fingers. So um, including us, right? Yes. So if you've got five proxies, you'll need to hold up six fingers to vote yourself. Uh, count fingers? From this distance and with the number of people in the room, I think so. We might need the light <laughs> um, All in favour of accepting the 2010 Treasurer's Report? Okay, that's the ayes. Anyone not in favour? Okay, I'll, any abstains? Abstentions? Actually, I believe I'm holding one abstention for that. Um, so we'll work out the exact numbers later, but basically passed unanimously ex via, except for one extension. abstention. Um, presentation of the auditor's report. Okay, um, I won't go through the auditor's report. It's a fairly standard um, financial report that most businesses produce at the end of the year. Um, it's been up online for a couple of weeks for people to, um, to go over. Um, for the people in the room, there's copies um, sitting around on some of the chairs if you want to have a quick look. Um, so I would like to move a motion that the membership accepts the auditor's report. Basically, um, the, the report gets presented and created by the auditor and we need to present it to the members. Um, and you guys, just we just need to move a motion that we presented it um, and then we'll submit it to fair trading. Um, so, I'd like to move a motion that membership accepts the auditor's report. Anyone second? Mary again. Um, all in favour of accepting the auditor's report? Okay, and against? Um, again, I've got one abstention on that. Um, so, uh, I take that motion as passed. Okay, we'll move on to constitutional changes. Um, so, for a little, I'll go into a little bit of background, although most of this has been hashed on the mailing list a couple of times. Um, the, the main reason that we're um, doing a constitutional change at all is because we need to change the financial year, as I discussed earlier. Um, because of the changes that New South Wales Fair Trading ma made, um, that means that we need to bring our constitution into line with all the new regulations. Um, the council, um, Mary doing most of the work, she put a lot of hard effort into this, um, looked through all the, um, the existing constitution, the old constitution, the constitutional changes. Um, at that stage we discovered that some of the, the previous constitutional changes that have been made at previous AGMs hadn't been submitted to fair trading, um, so weren't really part of our constitution technically. Um, and we came to the, to, to the um, decision that it would be easier to sort of start from scratch um, with the latest model rules and then make the changes that we need um, to, bring, to bring those up to date. Um, so I'll quickly go through um, the changes and then we'll, um, we can vote on them. 
Um, I'll close that one and that one. Um, I won't bring up the model rules um, because they're just the standard New South Wales legislative ones and they've been up on the list for a while. Um, so the first change is to change the financial year to start on the 1st of October. Um, this changes the start of the financial year from the 1st of January to the 1st of October while still keeping it 12 months. Um, this change is necessary since we are now required to have an auditor create an official audit of our accounts for presentation at the AGM and submission to fair trading. Um, since our AGM is normally held at the end of January, this does not leave enough time to have a completed audit by the AGM, especially in time when our accounts are in a large state of flux due to our largest conference being on at the same time. Um, so that one's actually a fairly simple change. Um, it just changes the July to October um, in the Constitution. Um, the next change is um, rather large. I won't go through it in um, extreme detail. Um, it basically takes um, the model rules and applies items that are either current practice um, in terms of the way we do things um, or make more sense because of the way that we tend to do things. Um, due to the, you know, our membership, we basically do just about everything online. Um, there's still a lot of stuff in the model rules that basically require you to have PO boxes and snail mail stuff around and keep, you know, actual physical books of members and that sort of stuff. Um, so that's what most of those changes um, are related to. Um, the only, actually no, I think they're all, the only change that we've added in there that's not current practice, um, which the council thought was a fairly fair change, the model rules and our old constitution um, required that 5% of members could call an SGM. Um, with our current membership sitting at somewhere between you know, 1,500 and 800 people, that means we'd have to have 80 people um, that were unhappy enough with the council or what the council was doing that they would require to, to have an SGM. So we added an extra little clause in there that said um, you know, as few as tw either 5% or 20 members um, could call an AGM. SGM, SGM sorry. Um, sorry? Sorry? Were it as the small world? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so we sort of figured if, you know, if 20 people could get together and decide that they needed to hold an SGM to kick out the council or similar, then that's, that was probably fair enough. Um, is there anything else in that section, Mary, that stands out? I don't think there was. It's mainly stuff like voting via web forms, um, doing stuff electronically, and most of it, I think, is from the current constitution. Yes, yes. Well, what wasn't in there, was it? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yes? Oh, sorry. Um, so the other thing that Mary mentioned that uh, we've put in there that which wasn't in um, the previous constitution was that um, we've been holding the election online prior to the AGM. Um, the model rules pretty much state that the, um, the election has to occur at the AGM. Um, okay, so the last change um, is probably is is the, probably the only real change that's actually a significant change to the constitution, um, the model rules, and to how it stands at the moment. Um, it's um, basically an outcome because of the way that we have free membership. Um, currently, the way the current constitution stands and the model rules stand, um, the only way that someone ceases to become a member is if they ask um, to have their membership uh, removed, if they ask to be removed from the, the register of members, or if they um, no, no, if they die, they don't come off. If they don't pay their membership fees. Um, so we would have a couple of members, for example, that have passed away or are no longer contactable or no longer in the community that would still be on the members register. And even if we wanted to remove them, we've got no real way of doing that as the current constitution stands. Um, so this constitutional amendment allows us, um, I think we've set it up to um, within two months before an election to basically send out an email to members and say, if you'd like to renew your membership, you need to click on this link, um, which is just a link in MemberDB, um, so that if people don't click on that link, we can then remove them from the, the register of members. Um, makes us, you know, gives us a better understanding of who our members actually are. Um, okay, that's the three changes. Any questions related to those? Okay. Um, back to the agenda. So, um, I'd like to move a motion to replace Linux Australia's current constitution with the New South Wales Fair Trading Model Constitution under the Associations Incorporation Act 2009. Um, any seconders? Seconded by Tim Ansell at the back. Um, all in favour of replacing Linux Australia's current constitution with the Fair Trading Model Constitution? Okay. All opposed? 
two. Um, it's and I I don't have any opposed. Okay, so two abstentions. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, so all four. <laughs> okay, any any um, against? Any abstentions? Okay, passed unanimously. Um, I'd like to move a motion to change the financial year of the organisation start on the 1st of October. Um, seconders, uh, Julian Goodwin as a seconder. Um, all in favour? Okay, all opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, passed unanimously. Um, I'd like to move a motion to apply changes to the constitution to bring the constitution in line with current practices. Uh, any seconders? Mary, um, all in favour? All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, passed unanimously. And finally, I'd like to pass a motion to apply changes to the constitution to allow for renewal of free memberships. All in favour? Oh, sorry, any seconders? Mary, um, all in favour? Uh, all opposed? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, passed unanimously. Um, okay, that was the um, big bit of business. Um, okay, that's about all we have. I have one small item. Mary, if you could come up, please. Um, Mary's done a lot of work over the last, I don't know, six months. Um, going through the painful and tedious process of working out what our constitution should look like, what was in the old model rules, talking to fair trading, finding out what our constitution actually was according to fair trading, even finding out who our public officer was. That one was a tricky one at one point. Um, as a token of the council's appreciation for all your work um, done on the constitution um, and um, your time in the council, we'd like to give you a gift voucher for Amazon. It's supposed to be to buy a cover for your Kindle, but I hear that someone beat us to it. Yeah, so, yeah, so you'll have to buy books or something. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mary. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Mary says thanks to IRC. Um, okay. Um, we don't have any other business on here, but we've gone pretty well in terms of time. Anyone would like to ask any questions or anything else? No? Excellent. Okay. Well, I'll close. Uh, yes, sure. <laughs> Hang on, I'll have to check that Vincent's a member. Actually, I won't do that on this laptop. I think he could. He likes to think. Hang on, hang on. Can he count yet? No. Not even to three? No. Oh, okay. He only knows 20 words and then he plays balls. <laughs> balls important. <laughs> okay, um, any questions on IC? Um, really. <laughs> Not really? Okay, um, then I'm going to close the meeting at 6.36. Uh, thanks all for coming, those present and those in the interwebs. <laughs>